What is up people? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. So today I'm pretty pumped up. We're going to talk about sales meetings with potential clients. So couples that are about to have their wedding and how to book them, or at least how I do it. But before I start, if you guys can do me a huge solid and smash that subscribe button, if you haven't already, I'm almost a 3k as of right now, making the video and then I don't know, it's like my next goal, so it would be cool if you subscribed. Lots of shit on the way, it'll be worth it, I'm telling you. But anyway, let's talk about sales meetings, or if you wanna call it the initial meeting. Now, I'm referring to weddings, I don't do mitzvahs, I do maybe one or two sweet 16s, I guess you can apply a lot of this stuff to that, but I mainly do weddings, I meet with couples that are about to get married, so that's what I'm gonna be talking about, that's the context of everything I'm gonna say right now, and um, let's get right into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is before the meeting happens, or before you even get the meeting. I think it's very, very important, number one, to really focus on Instagram and social media so you have a presence. So nine times out of 10, the couples that meet with you have already checked you out online, kind of already get your vibe, know what you're about, know what you're good at, and they know what they're in for when they meet with you. You never want to have a blind date meeting kind of thing. Having an online presence is so, so, so important because it literally kind of filters out who's gonna wanna meet with you and who's not gonna wanna meet with you, and that's a good thing. Myself, right, I'm kinda loud and obnoxious and from New Jersey and I curse and I'm an asshole and all that. Well, I put all that online, I'm authentic online, I, I am who I am, right? Some couples probably look at that and they're like, ah, this guy, not the right DJ for us, you know? And other couples might look at that and be like, hey, you know what, this guy would be great, I'd love to meet with him. And that is gold, that is such a valuable thing. Because think about it, you are preventing yourself from wasting your time and the client's time by meeting when in the end, they're really not gonna like you. So if you don't already, I highly, highly recommend you guys focus on social media, put yourself out there, it's gonna help you greatly in the long run. I actually made a video about this, on how to use Instagram to book web Settings. I'll put the link up here if you want to check that out and I go in depth in that video about social media. A couple other things I do prior to the meeting to get ready. I use my iPad Pro during the meeting for notes and stuff. I'll put their name on top real big so I can kind of memorize their name and make sure I have their names right. It's always good to call people by their first names and yada yada yada. You know that stuff, right? I also check out their venue. If I haven't been to their venue before, I'll check it out ahead of time, kind of look where it's at, kind of see if there's a virtual tour or pictures online so I can get a good idea of it. But there's one one rule you can't do, and so many DJs do this, and it just boggles my mind. Don't lie about whether or not you've been to the venue. If you haven't been there, just be honest. Say you haven't been there, but you'll go check it out, or you might be there in the future, or whatever. Just tell them your honest opinion. Lying is never the right choice in anything in life, especially first impression meetings. Because a lot of times, the have you been to my venue before is one of the first questions a couple will ask you. Let's get into the actual meeting part. So you sit down with them, it's either via Zoom or FaceTime or Google Meet video, I guess is the thing, I never used it before, or in person, right? I don't recommend doing phone meetings, I will if I have to, but I'd rather see them face to face, see their actual reactions to my dumb jokes, and you know, you get a better vibe of someone when you can actually see their face. So I think Zoom's been incredibly useful lately for me since the quarantine and everything it's just easier and you know they can just log right in I let them in the room and bam way better than FaceTime and all that other stuff so Zoom's my favorite way to meet with people other than in person but regardless make sure you're meeting face to face whether virtually or in person I'm not gonna go through my whole meeting with you guys I mean every meeting is different I'm not a robot I say different stuff every single meeting it really depends on the couple where the conversation goes but I do have some questions that I always ask or always try to ask and you know general I'm gonna try and generalize like what I do during my meeting so you can kind of get the science of it and then you guys can take it and make it your own. So there's a couple questions I think are very, very important to ask. Number one, the logistics part, right? So is your ceremony gonna be at the venue or not? You doing your cocktail hour at the venue? What rooms are you gonna be in at the venue? All that stuff. I also usually ask how you heard about me. Maybe it's another couple that you recently did, you know, they were at that wedding. If they've already been to a wedding that you did, then that saves you a lot of like explaining later on, you know what I mean? It gives you context of like what to go over and whatnot. It's always good to know where they heard about you so you know where to steer the conversation. The next question I ask is the most important and basically what I say is, what's your vision? Now you get a couple different answers from this question. Some couples are literally waiting for that question. You say, what's your vision? They're like, bet. 
and then blah, and they just, just spit it all out. They had it all lined up. They know everything they want. They literally are just like, they got it all figured out already. Other couples might be a little stumped. They might be like, uh, I don't know. We just want to have a good time. You know what I mean? And that's like the, you know, kind of generic answer you get from everybody. You know, we just... We want a DJ that doesn't suck, we want people to have fun, and uh, yeah, that's our vision. So you might have to dive a little deeper, you know, hey, have you been to weddings recently? Did you see anything at the weddings you liked or didn't like? What are you guys into music-wise? What music do you listen to your car? All that stuff. And I also always like to ask about their guest list. How many people? Is there going to be more family, more friends? What are the age groups? And then they'll kind of, you know, dive into that, tell you what kind of family members are coming. Maybe they have a lot of grandparents, maybe all their grandparents passed away, maybe they have a lot of cousins that are younger so it's mostly family but like still a younger crowd you know you want to kind of get the demographics down so you know how not only to how to DJ their wedding but also how to let them know how your style may fit their crowd and what they're looking for now other than the core questions I just talked about the rest of the meeting really depends on the couple you know it kind of is always different for me I always explain my style you know and how it kind of relates to their vision and so they can kind of get a glimpse of like you know how I DJ and you know what I do for example I'm not a DJ that's on the mic all the time so I always tell them like listen I'm really into DJing I love to blend songs and you know make the music kind of make sense and flow and you know I just I really get into that I'm just not the type of DJ that's on the mic every five seconds like I'll host your wedding I'll do the formality every once in a while let's hear it for him but other than that I'm not gonna be on the mic all the time that's just not my style just so you know and it's up to them to say or whether or not that's what they want some couples are like that's exactly what we want we hate when they're on the mic all the time and other couples you know maybe aren't about it they want somebody who's gonna be super interactive and out there all the time and then I'm not the right fit for them at least I was up front and then another big thing I always talk about during the meetings is the planning process when I typically meet with my couples our online planner and how that works how to request songs how I handle requests all that stuff I kind of go into detail how I handle the behind-the-scenes planning process so they understand ahead of time what they're in for with me what homework I'm gonna give them you know what I mean what their responsibilities are gonna be what my responsibilities are gonna Going to be that way it's kind of all open I think that's very important to kind of go over and it really gives them peace of mind at the end of the day that you're that one vendor they don't have to worry about then the last thing I go over is pricing the sales part I guess I give them the pricing I go over that in detail answer any questions they have at the end I remind them how important of a decision this is and to take their time meet with other DJs if they want to all that stuff I really am laid back when it comes to meeting I'm not a salesy person I hate salesy people I hate buying cars I hate buying furniture I hate any of that shit I can't stand it so I'm not gonna do that to somebody else and it really is a big decision I don't want them to make a snap decision on me because I want them to have the best DJ for them I really really do I just just try and just be honest with them so I give them the freedom to take your time take a week think about it all that and most of the time they're gonna book but if they don't then it wasn't meant to be I never asked for the sale so many sales guys would be like oh ask for the sale never forget ask for the sale that's how you get your closing ratios up it's just such a bullshit ass car salesman technique like this is a wedding weddings are once in a lifetime well some for some people two three four but like it's supposed to be once in a lifetime so they're not going to make the decision again. So they, they, they should have the freedom to think about it. Don't pressure them. You're just going to make them feel uncomfortable at the end of the day. Like so many people use these outdated car salesman techniques. Like I'm Nicholas Spinelli, the chief executive officer, president, and king of ABC Entertainment. Are you here for the big sale? Are you? So what's your budget? Up to... Well, I'll tell you what, with this unbelievable sale we're having, I can do this amazing platinum gold periwinkle package for exactly your budget price plus $4.99. We are an award-winning company. Do you know how many Wedding Wire Awards we have? We have 249 years of combined experience. Have I been to your venue? Absolutely. That's the venue like with the ballroom, right? There's a bar too, right? Yeah, there's a bar. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk. Yeah. Wait, before you leave, I want you to talk to my manager. All right, you can go think about it, but keep in mind, the price is going to go way up. I mean, I'm booking weddings into like 2042. I'm like the best salesman. I should do another seminar at the DJ Expo and teach DJs how to sell like me. I'm Nick Spinelli and I approve of this message. You know what I mean? Like it's just slimy. Don't do it.
Now, after the meeting, I always send them an email. I let them know it's coming during the meeting, and I send them an email. I'll include links of like, you know, little demos of anything they're interested in, lights or a photo booth or anything like that. I include my full menu so they have it, right? So especially if we're meeting virtually, I can't hand give them a menu. So I include uh, the full menu attached in PDF form so they can check that out, maybe show their parents or whoever else is kind of involved in the decision-making process, and let them know to take their time and let me know when they can. As far as follow-up, the only real follow-up I do, I usually say something like, hey, just so you know, we're releasing your date tomorrow, no pressure at all. If you need a little more time, just let me know. If they need more time, they'll let you know. If they want a book, they'll let you know. If they don't want a book, they're either gonna ghost you or they're gonna let you know they don't want a book. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Now you guys get the gist of like how my meetings go and what's said, the content of the actual meetings. Couple quick tips. Number one, don't talk about yourself too much, okay? Try not to come off too egotistical or just, you know, me, me, me type stuff. Ask questions and listen to the responses. And then answer their questions, maybe tell them things that they might think would be relevant to what they're looking for or their question or whatever, but don't talk about yourself too much. Don't sit there and talk about your achievements, your awards, or where you've DJed or whatever. Just don't, it's just not necessary. Unless they ask or unless it comes up and it's relevant. Otherwise, don't be that guy. People hate anyone who talks about themselves too much. For me, it's literally my pet peeve. I can't stand it. I'll punch you in the throat. I literally just walk away. I can't stand it. Also, if you're meeting via Zoom or another virtual way, put in the time to learn the program and maybe buy a good camera or a good microphone so you're heard well, you're seen well, it looks professional. I think first impressions are everything, so you don't want to look like shit. Don't be meeting them on a 2008 Hewlett Packard computer with the built-in half a megapixel camera on that bitch like you can't even see you because the lighting is terrible and it's just blurry streaming at 240p or whatever like just do it the right way okay because first impressions are everything if your camera looks like shit if your audio sounds like shit do you really think they're gonna think you sound good at a wedding hell no so invest in the right equipment so you can do your virtual meetings correctly and professionally and also take the time to learn the programs and you'll be surprised at all the cool stuff they can do that you can kind of incorporate in your meetings and stuff too so you know just Trust me, it'll be worth it. Google it. Or maybe I'll make a video about it. I don't know. We'll see. I'm kind of on a planning kick lately. But that's it, people. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or anything I didn't cover or something you want me to cover in more detail in a future video, seriously let me know in the comments. I think I'm going to do a whole planning series maybe. I might do a couple more planning videos in the future. We'll see. I don't know. Give me some ideas, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace out.